hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video is based on a specific request and I uh, talked to you guys before about how high yield immunology is and that like most of my test was actually asking about the immunodeficiency syndromes as well as other immunology topics so I think that this is a topic worth talking about and in this video today I'm gonna walk you through questions uh, about the immunodeficiency syndromes. I'm going to break them down with you and show you what to look for in a question as well as explain some of these topics briefly. So please guys um, don't forget to share this video. So let's get started. All right, so of the immunodeficiency syndromes that affect the adaptive immune system, there is uh, B cell deficiencies and there is T cell deficiency. So some is of these syndromes are characterized mainly by B cell deficiency. Others are mainly characterized by T cell deficiency. So remember guys that B cells eventually mature into plasma cells which produce antibodies. And these antibodies mainly target extracellular pathogens like bacteria. However, T cells um, are differentiated into like helper cells and cytotoxic cells. So the cytotoxic cells kill your own cells, right? Now they kill infected cells. So infected cells that have an intracellular pathogen, right? So your own cells may be infected with a virus, may be infected with uh, protozoa, intracellular bacteria or fungi so in other words you know for someone to have a t-cell deficiency that means they wouldn't be able to get rid of viruses they wouldn't be able to get rid of protozoa and so they will have infections predominantly intracellular but those people who have uh, syndromes that result in b-cell deficiency will mainly have a problem attacking extracellular organisms like bacteria so they will have more frequent bacterial infection it's very important to differentiate these two that will make a lot of difference when you pick up on the clinical picture and don't forget that there is also combined immunodeficiencies where someone might have a b-cell as well as a t-cell defect and so they will have infections with all of these pathogens like bacteria, viruses, protozoa, everything. Okay, so with this background, let's get started with our first question. Okay, so an 18 month old Caucasian male is being evaluated for an eczematous skin rash. So before you actually discover anything about the clinical picture and start highlighting or anything like that I would like to know the demographic all right so in such uh, questions about immunodeficiencies in particular you really want to look at whether this is x-linked like whether the baby is a male or it's it doesn't matter can tell you an infant it doesn't have to like the question doesn't have to mention male or female but when it mentions a male specifically, uh, there must be a purpose. It's showing you that this is X-linked. Usually, this is the case. All right, so 18-month-old um, Caucasian male is being evaluated for an eczematous skin rash, so eczema. His past medical history is significant for several bouts of severe respiratory infections that required hospitalization. So this is a sign of immunodeficiency. Now we still don't know right now whether these uh, respiratory infections are viral or bacterial. Uh, so whether this is a B cell defect or a T cell defect. Initial evaluation reveals increased bleeding time. His complete blood count shows a white blood cell count of 9,000, which is normal, and a platelet count of 40,000. Now, this is very low. The platelets seem abnormally small, so even their appearance is um, 
not right and deformed on the proof of blood smear which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in this patient now this shows me a little bit of a triad and it's quite well known actually i brought this mnemonic from uh, first aid water wiscott aldrich thrombocytopenia eczema and recurrent infections so this baby shows all three he has eczema okay he has thrombocytopenia very low platelet count and he has recurrent um, infections pyogenic that is because this condition of whisker aldrich leads to a problem in the cytoskeleton a defect in the cytoskeleton of the platelets as well as the white blood cell right so it's a um like the platelets are uh qualitatively um like uh, something is wrong with the platelets like a cytoskeletal defect that makes the platelets die and that is why they decrease in number and so this patient has bleeding tendency with increased bleeding time you might also see petechiae and stuff like that on his skin plus eczema plus recurrent infections because again there's also a cytoskeletal defect in his local sites all right so this is a triad that you just need to spot in the question and something that will help you with this is the rash that's number one eczema is kind of a giveaway here uh, because that's not seen a lot and because a male uh, the fact that this baby is a male means this condition is x-linked and there's only a few x-linked conditions there is like the a gamma global anemia there is this one and there is the uh, uh, the skid there is one form of it that is x-linked so there's a lot of clues in this question actually to clue you into Wiscott Aldrich. All right. Moving on to the next question. All right. So an infant is born with facial dysmorphia and a cleft palate. Further evaluation reveals a heart condition with a right to left shine and the absence of of a thymic shadow on x-ray and it's very important actually this sign is found in conditions where there is a t-cell defect we know that the thymus is the site of maturation of t-cells right and normally in infants or like in babies the thymic shadow is prominent because um, it usually shrinks after puberty so it is usually prominent in infants on x-ray so if you don't find a thymic shadow that's an alarm right and that's an indication of uh, t-cell deficiency all right let's continue uh, the infant experienced frequent and recurrent sinopulmonary infections so here is again another clue to immunodeficiency so what this question essentially describes is a picture of something wrong with the face okay a t-cell deficiency right because of absence of a thymic shadow and recurrent infections as a result now there is only one uh, immunodeficiency syndrome that shows facial dysmorphia like most of these conditions only affect the immune system but the fact that it has affected the face means that there is something wrong with embryological development in the first place, right? Right, and this can, the fact that he mentioned infant without, without telling you whether it's a male or female means that it's most likely autosomal, right? It's not uh, X-linked or anything like that. So, this is actually the George syndrome which is a result of the absence of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches remember guys that the um third pouch the third pharyngeal pouch gives the inferior the parathyroid gland and the thymus 
all right? And the fourth pouch gives the superior parathyroid gland, which means that this baby, because he doesn't have the fourth pouch and he also doesn't have the third pouch, it means that this baby doesn't have parathyroids, which means he will have hypocalcemia and he also doesn't have a thymus. And that is very important because now there is no place for T-cell maturation. And so this baby will mainly have a T-cell defect. Now, there is nothing wrong with his B-cells because it's only the thymus that's gone. And so this is a T-cell defect. And you can remember this um, whole constellation with the mnemonic Okay, I'll, you're going to find in uh, first aid, uh, which is catch 22, cardiac defects, like it said here, heart condition, um, abnormal facies, again here, thymic hypoplasia, here, absence of a thymic shadow, and cleft palate, says it here as well, and like I told you, hypocalcemia secondary to parathyroid aplasia, because parathyroids come from the third and fourth pouch as well. All right, so if you find all these symptoms together, which uh, the question has given out a lot of them, uh, then this must be the George syndrome. But that is actually not the question here. The question asks, examination of this patient's lymph nodes will most likely show poor development of which of the following structures. Now, the examiner wants you to understand that this guy or like this infant has a T cell defect, right? Because there is no thymus, then there is no T cell maturation, right? So this question essentially wants you to know that this infant will have a T cell defect all over his body. So wherever you should find T cells, you wouldn't find them. So we should find T cells in the thymus, but we can't. So there is no thymic shadow. And we should also find T cells in the lymph nodes, but we can't because there is no mature T cells, right? So he wants you to know where the T cells are located, okay? So now I know it's in the thymus and it's also in the lymph nodes, but where in the lymph nodes, okay? So as a result of his deficiency, where in the lymph nodes would you find T cell lacking, which zone, okay? So examination of this patient's lymph nodes will most likely show poor development of which of the following structures. So I want you guys to know that the lymph nodes look like that. There is like afferent lymphatics, they bring in the lymph and the efferent lymphatics bring it out filtered after every, all the immune reactions have happened inside. All right, I'm just gonna delete this stuff. All right, so in the, T, in the lymph nodes, the B cells, the T cells, the plasma cells, dendritic cells, macrophages are organized in zones, All right? So there is a cortex where there is follicles, and these follicles are primarily made up of B cells, and there's also like around them, in between them here, like in here, for example, in between the follicles, there is T helper cells, okay? because these help the B cells. So the cortical zone is like primarily B cells. And then comes after that, inner to that will be the paracortex. You can find it here in blue. And the paracortex is predominantly T cells. So what do you think will be the zone, the lymph node zone where T cells would be lacking because of the George? obviously it will be the paracortex because the paracortex is the zone where you usually find T cells. But because this baby has the George, you wouldn't be able to see the T cells, right? So obviously his lymph nodes will show poor development of the paracortex. Now, what about the medullary cords and medullary sinuses? Well, the medullary cords have plasma cells and macrophages. The medullary sinuses is essentially where everything drains in order to be uh, ready for drainage into the efferent lymphatic channels. 
So yeah, this is a T cell dysfunction. The George is a T cell dysfunction. So wherever I should find T cells, I wouldn't because of this deficiency. So I should find T cells uh, in the thymus, but I wouldn't because of this deficiency. So there is an absent thymic shadow. I should find T cells in the pericortex, but I wouldn't. So there is poor development of the pericortex in the lymph nodes, okay? All right, moving on to the next question. A one-year-old boy. So again, guys, whenever they mention boy or girl in infants in particular, or especially with immunodeficiency syndromes, there is a reason, okay? There is a reason. It's telling you here that this is X-linked, okay? If, like, until proven otherwise, like, if you find out that it really doesn't make a difference after you finish the question, okay, you can ignore it. But I like to highlight this from the start, okay? So a one-year-old boy is brought to the clinic after suffering repeated infections over the last four months, including otitis media, pneumonia, and erysipelas. Guys, please uh, keep note of what types of infections there are. Because like I told you earlier, there is a B-cell defect. Um, yeah, there is a B-cell uh, defect and there is a T-cell defect. And the T-cell defect usually presents with viral, fungal, protozoal, opportunistic infections. But the B-cell defect usually presents with bacterial infections. So as you can see here, otitis media is most commonly caused by strep pneumo, haemophilus influenza. So these are bacteria, right? Pneumonia is also most commonly caused by strep pneumo. So bacteria as well. Erysipelas, most commonly by uh, strep uh, pyogenes. So again, he's highlighting here that this baby with an X-linked disorder is suffering bacterial infections. So this is gearing towards a B cell defect. So that's how you should approach questions. Although his infections have been responsive to treatment, his father said, my son is constantly on antibiotics. So again, antibiotics indicate that he is suffering bacterial infections. I'm afraid he will end up like his uncle who passed away from pneumonia as a teenager. So the reference here to his uncle means that this runs in males, okay? So again, proving that this is X-linked. So yes, we thought correctly when we said that a boy like mentioning a boy is for a reason that this is x-linked now the patient also has persistent diarrhea and a recent stool antigen detection assay was positive for giardia and that's also something commonly seen with the condition we we're just going to mention his complete blood count is normal but immunoglobulin panel demonstrates very low serum levels of all immunoglobulin types i guess you now have figured out what this is this is x-linked agammaglobulinemia or bruton's agammaglobulinemia where there is a defect in b cell maturation so because the pre-B cell cannot mature at all, um, so it never comes out of the bone marrow. And so you essentially do not have B, enough B cells. Obviously, then you will not be able to have plasma cells nor antibodies ultimately, and therefore you can never fight bacterial infections because there is no antibodies, right? And so as a result, there is a low serum level of all immunoglobulin types because it's the entire B cell population that is gone. It's not uh, a subset uh, population, rather the entire thing. That means that all types of immunoglobulin will not be there. And that is why this baby wasn't able to fight off bacterial infections that led to otitis media, pneumonia, and erysipelas because these are mostly caused by bacteria, which are extracellular. So that means they need antibodies, but there is no antibodies because there is no mature B cells, right? Now, there is a very nice statement mentioned here. Intradermal injection of candida antigens resulted in a large indurated nodule within 48 hours. Now, do you consider this a positive or a negative response? 
of course a large nodule is in duration is a positive response to candida so this is testing delayed type hypersensitivity reaction which is T cell mediated so essentially the physician wanted to test T cell function now here it is proving to you that this baby actually has no problem with the T cell this baby has no T cell defect it's exclusively a B cell defect okay so um, this is again proving to you that this is X-linked a gamma globulinemia and there is nothing wrong with the T cells. So essentially what the question is asking, this patient's lymph nodes most likely lack which of the following structure. Now this is the complete other extreme of like on the far end of the spectrum of the question uh, before it. Uh, which was about T cell uh, defects. This one is a pure B cell defect. And so which area of the lymph node do you think will be affected? Now, the choices here are a little bit confusing. Of course, you're going to rule out the paracortex because it's um, the T cell zone. And you're also going to rule out the medullary sinuses because like I told you, this is where um, where the everything drains. Um, so we're left with outer cortex or germinal center. So which of these? Like I told you before, the outer cortex, when I say outer cortex, it's this whole area, okay? Which means that it's got the primary follicle, like when I say outer cortex, it has primary follicles and it has these areas in between where there is uh, CD4 T cells in between, again here so all of this is part of the outer cortex okay so it's got b cells and cd4 t cells and stuff like that and germinal centers so should i choose outer cortex or should i choose germinal centers now germinal center indicates an active follicle the fact that it is pale means that the uh, chromatin is open that these are active proliferating B cells that are trying to mature in order to, to make plasma cells and also uh, proliferating to make memory cells so this is an area of very high activity it's impossible for a baby with a gamma globulinemia to have such a zone the germinal center okay germinal center will only result if B cells interact with antigens now, they will never interact with antigens if they're immature. So this baby can never have germinal centers. It will be completely absent. And the question is clearly asking, if this patient's lymph nodes most likely lack. Lack means completely absent, okay? So they obviously lack the germinal centers. But do they completely lack outer cortex? Remember that the outer cortex also has CD4 T cells in between. These are counted as part of the outer cortex, so I can't say they lack it. I would say diminished, but in order to say lack, um, that would be uh, more likely for the germinal centers. Okay, you get the idea? So this is a pure B cell defect. Again, there is no T cell defect because of a positive candida antigen test. Uh, so that's actually the reason why this statement was mentioned. So I hope that makes sense. Moving on to the next question. All right. A six month old male is being evaluated for difficulty breathing. So again, it mentioned here a male and that's for a reason as well. Most likely it's an X-linked disorder as well. Uh, it's being evaluated for difficulty breathing and restlessness. He was born by an uncomplicated vaginal delivery of a 22 year old mother who tested negative for HIV. Okay. He has a history of recurrent otitis media. Again, this is bacterial. So you should, that's how you should interpret it in your mind. Now that this is an immunology question, now I need to figure out what the clinical picture is saying. Is it saying bacterial, viral, fungal? So is it a B cell defect or a T cell defect? So recurrent otitis media, this is bacterial, right? Chronic diarrhea and failure to thrive. I will never know what chronic diarrhea 
um, maybe protozoal, parasitic, yeah, um, unlikely to be bacterial really. On physical exam, he appears to kidney against cyanotic, looks like he has pneumonia probably. Chest x-ray shows bilateral interstitial opacities and interstitial is either viral or fungal. Bronchoscopy is performed and pneumocystis is seen upon silver staining of the bronchoalveolar lavage. So this baby has actually a combination of B and T cell defects. Look, recurrent otitis media, we know that otitis media is most commonly caused by strep pneumo, hemophilus influenza, more excella. So all these are bacterial. So they need B cells, right? So this baby has a B cell defect. He must have a B cell defect. And the fact he has pneumocystis, which like I told you before, um, or I didn't tell you, but yeah, this is an intracellular fungus. It's an opportunistic pathogen. It's also seen in HIV patients, okay? Uh, which is probably the reason why this question uh, mentioned that his mother is HIV negative. So this baby does not have uh, manifestations of AIDS or anything. Rather, there is a B cell defect here and pneumocystis, which is an intracellular pathogen. And the fact that it's intracellular reminds us of what I told you guys earlier, that a B-cell defect will mainly show increased infections by extracellular organisms like bacteria, but a T-cell defect, because T-cells kill cells, that means that the pathogen must have been intracellular, and pneumocystis is one of those. It's an intracellular fungus, so this baby also has a T-cell defect, right? So, it is not a complement deficiency. This will... Uh, would be um, like it would present with a different uh, symptom uh, because like complement deficiencies there is early complement deficiency and there is late complement deficiency uh, mainly with encapsulated organisms uh, but it wouldn't show a pneumocystis infection so this is wrong and this is a disorder of the innate immune system um, I might make another video on that if you guys want it uh, but we're talking here disorders of the adaptive immune system. Of course, this is not cystic fibrosis, even though it's pneumonia, but uh, cystic fibrosis patients uh, usually do not get pneumocystis pneumonia, okay? Rather, they can get pseudomonas pneumonia. Now, agama globulinemia. Now, this is confusing because, again, it's a male and... He's suffering uh, recurrent otitis media and also chronic diarrhea is seen. But because of pneumocystis, I'll have to rule that out because agama globulinemia is exclusively a B cell defect. So there is no T cell defect. You need to understand that. Or combined immunodeficiency. And this is the correct answer. This baby has a combined immunodeficiency. And that's why it's showing both. So the key to solving these questions, guys, is to interpret the clinical picture. So don't just skim over otitis media, sinusitis, blah, 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 blah. No. Don't just skim over it. There is a reason why they mentioned it by name. They mentioned otitis media by name because it's bacterial. They mentioned pneumocystis by name because that indicates it's a T-cell defect. So you realize, you should realize from here that it's a B-cell defect. You should realize from here that it's a T-cell defect. And so this baby has a combined immunodeficiency. And actually, um, the most common uh, underlying cause of SCID, which is um, severe combined immunodeficiency, is X-linked. So this baby is a male, and most commonly it's X-linked. But there is also autosomal forms of it, um, but the most common is X-linked. So there is also a reason why they mentioned male. And there is a reason why they mentioned he's negative for HIV, so that you don't think that pneumocystis is a manifestation of AIDS or anything. Okay. All right, guys, 